so it's been a while. Before we get into this entire video, hello, my name is Megan Batoon. As you can see from the title of this video, this is not a life update, this is a kitchen part two. Um, but obviously I'm not in a kitchen. As you may know, I've been working on this desert project for like half a year now, and we are almost done. The reason why I'm in this place and there's a bed there and things strewn about and it's not designed or decorated in any sort of capacity is because I am living in an ex Airbnb until we finish. I had to take a break from YouTube and social media and renovating because I had body hives. I had stress hives because I was overworked, obviously stressed. I went through a period of depression and worked on getting that in check. And this journey has been, I mean, everything was tested. There's just been so many setbacks and pivots and learning edges of myself, my working preferences, my business partner and my relationship. Like there's so many different things that I learned through this experience that I will share when I have enough energy and capacity to put it together in a way that I like. It's so weird to finally be at the end. Like we can start to finally see the finish line. And I know that I've never explicitly said what this project is and I don't think I will until I announce it. Just because I've never done something like this before and it is public facing, so I want to make sure that I, meets my standards and that I feel good about it before um, putting my name on it. I take a lot of pride in my work and my craft and it's so much deeper than design to me. It's not just, oh, this looks pretty. It's like, I want to create immersive experiences where people can go and feel things that they've never felt before. The space in which people could allow themselves to feel what is needed to be felt. One of these days I am gonna make like a documentary because I feel like this is so interesting, but maybe it's interesting to me. But that's not this video. This video is part two of a kitchen renovation, building this kitchen from scratch. And just to recap, this is where we left off. As far as the internet knows, this is where we started. I'll show the true before in the final video of this series because you're gonna lose your minds. <laughs> Putting in builder grade unfinished cabinetry, building a custom floating shelf to echo the same configuration of the cabinetry, just barely scraping by function. That is where we ended. So let's make some real progress, huh? The first thing I'm doing is now my favorite task to do, which is tiling. I love doing this. I think that it really plays to my strengths of being so detail oriented. I started setting the tile on red guarded plywood from the edges. What I learned is it would have made my life way easier if I started from the sink, but I didn't because I've never done this before. We learn as we go. For anyone that was asking what the red is for, it's a waterproof membrane. So you wanna put this anywhere that there's gonna be water because even when there's grout, it's porous and you just wanna make sure that you don't have any water leakage anywhere. For the shelf, I had made the frame out of two by threes and then attached some hardy backer board on top of that. Hardy backer is a cement board that you put in showers. We are so far over budget that we just can't afford new material, so I'm just using what we have. So in order to finish the shelf, I'm gonna wrap it in plywood. What I do here is mark in three different places where my measurement is, and then I draw a line that connects all of them, just to make sure that I am cutting my material evenly. So I'm doing that for the length, and then the same thing with the width. So once I cut this, I will receive two different pieces, one for the top and one for the bottom. This is how I have to work. I don't have a workshop, so there's always buckets in the way, but you know, get the job done. Nail gunning that, wood filling it in whatever position's necessary. And then I start to wrap the outer edges of the shelf with the plywood. So cutting to the dimensions, doing the exact same thing, nail gunning it, wood filling it until the entire thing looks seamless. I wanted to make sure to do the wrapping of the shelf first because then when I cut my tiles, I wanna go all the way up to the bottom of it. And then whatever gaps are in between the shelf and the tile, I'm just gonna caulk. I will not disclose the grout color because that is gonna be a surprise for the next video. 
One of the things that's really important in kitchen design is to continue the horizontal line anywhere possible. So you don't want things looking like Tetris. You want it to look continual. So I took some extra baseboard that we had and I'm marking the height of the shelf and the edge of the wall. And that's where I'm gonna make my cuts. Just so when I paint the floating shelf, I'll also paint this baseboard and it will look like one continual line. Now, once this is installed, I can see that there's incongruencies in between my tile cuts. Ugh. So, you guessed it, I'm removing the tiles and I'm gonna recut them so that they can be uniform. It's the small details like this that really make a big difference. Some people may not believe it, but like, you can really tell. Since the outer layer of the drywall got peeled off with the thin set, I'm using the special liquid that helps prime porous materials just to make sure that it's, you know, safe. I'm using quick set thin set because when I'm doing vertical work, I really don't like things slipping and sliding. So this sets in about two hours. So it grips and stays much more than a normal thin set. Cutting the tile to size and then applying one by one, spacing and making sure that it looks pretty darn perfect. Just a quick disclaimer here. I wanna try and stop using the word perfect because it doesn't exist. And to have that expectation for myself is just setting myself up for failure. Done is better than perfect. And a lot of times good enough feels just as good as perfect. Honestly, doing a lot of inner work to unlearn and see where my perfectionistic habits are coming from. However, I will say that it really does help when you're a tile setter, <laughs> which I am not, but I have definitely learned that that is one way that I can hone that skill slash burden. Now I'm gonna tile around the sink. I'm setting the tile and then marking a hole where I'm gonna have to drill with my hole saw bit. I'm letting them sit a bit so that the drill doesn't absolutely rip out the tiles themselves. I always make sure to measure and lay out my tile before I start thin setting it, just to make sure if I have to make any cuts or adjustments. Here's the hole saw bit that I had used in the primary shower bathroom. But this time, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not using a guide. So check me out, growth. For this windowsill or anytime I'm doing detail work, what I've learned to do is to not pre-cut things, but to measure, mark, and cut piece by piece, because that's the only way that this is gonna work. Walls are never completely perfect. Nothing is ever straight you just have to work with what you're given and essentially hide all the flaws in your finished work. So do the best that you can up front, and then just tweak as you go until it looks good. That's the DIY philosophy that I've been developing through this renovation process. Good prep work and good finish work can make all of the difference in a project. I'm just gonna let this clip play in real time just so you can hold your breath with me because I definitely wasn't breathing when I was trying to cut this curve in this ceramic tile. Checking for placement. Again, the curves don't have to be perfect. This is gonna be covered with caulk anyway. What's more important is that the edges line up, which they do. For the edges, I'm doing the same exact thing. This looks pretty messy, <laughs> but I guess the process is a little messy, but just don't freak out, it'll be fine. That's what I have to keep telling myself. Okay, and then we let them sit overnight and then I go back to my shelter. We are back. We really wanted the outside. Usually I like to eat outside because look how beautiful, oh my God. You never know what's on you in the desert. I thought this was a bug because um, there was a rat in the laundry room. So always on the lookout for something to be on me. I love to eat dinner out here because it helps me relax because this is what it looks like. Nothing short of gorgeous. And I like to start my days out here, but there's a wind warning right now. So I am just going to make food and then I'm gonna eat it in this hot tub. There's always a way to pivot. Let's grub, huh? I'm actually very excited that I am gonna cook something because I have, I've been doing one of two things when I sustain myself after a full day's worth of renovations. I either just eat chips and salsa straight from the jar in the bag or I eat 
this shepherd's pie. I stand in front of the fridge and I have one bite like this. Mm, it's so good. And then the fridge starts beeping because I'm still shoving this into my gullet. And it's like beep, 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 door's been open too long. And I was like, yes, yes, okay. Take one more bite and then I close it. I sit on the couch. I get hungry again because I've only had two bites of shepherd's pie, cold shepherd's pie. And I come back and I do the same thing. We're really not working with all of our resources right now. <laughs> Black bean tostada time. As always, when it comes to me eating real food, hugest thank you to HelloFresh because I honestly don't think I would be able to do it without you. The fact that renovating takes so much time and effort out of my day, I don't really have anything left over to go to the grocery store or to meal plan or to prep or to do any extra thinking than I have to. So the fact that everything is already pre-portioned, it comes directly to my doorstep from the farm. So I'm getting the freshest produce. I don't have to go pick out the best stuff in the grocery store, which takes more time. There's less prep, there's less wasted food. All the packaging you see here used to ship the food is already recycled content. And let me tell you, especially when you're so depleted and under-resourced, getting a home-cooked meal on the table every day or any day is an accomplishment worth celebrating. To nourish yourself and to show yourself that you are worth cooking for and worth putting good quality food into your system so that you can operate on all cylinders is something that I was overlooking for quite a long time. And HelloFresh has just made it so much easier for the past three or four years in order to make that goal a reality. They also have quick and easy recipes, including 20 minute meals if you're stressed for time. The saying is pressed for time, but of course I changed it to stressed for time. There's easy cleanup. I always use the bag that the ingredients come in as a trash can as I go. So cleanup is super easy. One of my favorite things to do is increase the box serving so I can use the leftovers for lunches or whenever I'm feeling a little peckish because like I said, getting into the kitchen and cooking a meal sometimes is a lot of effort, a lot of work. Sometimes we can't do it because we are tired. But if I'm gonna cook once, I might as well string it out so that I get the biggest return on my investment. Um, okay, tostada. Ta-da, tostada. See, I never would have made this before. This looks like a communion wafer. <laughs> sometimes I change up my plan depending on what I feel like my body is asking for at the time. Sometimes I'll do the meat plan. Sometimes I'll do the pescatarian plan. They have so many different type of options, family friendly, fit and wholesome, veggie options. So it's really convenient that I can change whatever my plan is based off of how I'm feeling that week. Also speaking of options, they have 50 weekly menu and market items to choose from. So you can think less about what's for dinner and more about achieving your goals, whether that is a renovation, whether that is getting enough rest, whether that is untangling yourself from the throes of perfectionism, whatever that is, this is one way to make that journey a little easier. If you wanna give it a try, go to hellofresh.com and use code Batoon16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. That's HelloFresh.com. Use code Batoon16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. And now a taste test. I know I said I was gonna eat these in the hot tub, but that seems like a lot of work. And knowing me, I think the hot tub would be having most of it. So let's just see how we can do in this windstorm. Um, okay, dinner with the view. It just blows away. <laughs> it's so windy. The crunch. I'm gonna do this in the hot tub. Let's get back to tiling a shower. A shower, a kitchen. A shower for the dishes. <laughs> okay, this is where we are at with the kitchen tile. It's looking pretty good, honestly, if I do say so myself. Can you believe this? This is obviously a kitchen, and that's more than I could say two weeks ago. <laughs> Damn me. Oh. All right, let's just continue. And honestly, that's the only way that I've gotten to this point in this project is one step at a time. Because if I thought about all the things that we had to do to finish, I don't think I would get out of bed. <laughs> it's like, I have to move the fridge, but also maybe let's see what's in it before we move it. Nothing for my gullet. I guess I have a carrot. Kind of sad, but not bad. Well, except for 
Now I have to do baseboard trim on the sides to make sure I cover all that. So you know what, we're not done. But we are one step further. Then I brought in this piece that's gonna act as our pantry. I had made something for this corner initially, months and months and months ago, basically like the first month that we started working on the project. It was one of my first woodworking projects and it wasn't great to be honest. So we ended up buying this corner moment and we thought that we wanted to paint the cabinets a peach color, but the peach color ended up being super orange and we are not gonna talk about it. So that is TBF, to be fixed. Back to things that we can control now. Around the window is another curved bullnose edge moment. And for this, I'm going to continue the shelf with those little baseboard pieces, cutting to size, little angles in order to make a curve. I learned how to do this on the actual baseboard in one of the rooms. If you follow me on Instagram, you knew that I was super hype when I figured it out. So that was kind of nice practice so that I could do it easier, easier, <laughs> so that I could do it more easily in the kitchen. LOL, my entire body fitting in the sink. Just gonna move a dirty dish. I'm realizing now that I actually don't know how high these baseboard moments should be. So I've got to measure and see what the height of it is so that I can make sure that that horizontal line continues. And this is just my mood for the entire project, just reaching and stretching myself to the limits to make this happen. Getting wood filler in all the holes and the crevices, letting that dry. And then I'm gonna go tile the remaining bit of the kitchen, the last bit of tile. So I just, again, cut to size. And oh, how satisfying is that last piece? So once I space that out and let that dry, then I go back with my orbital sander and I start smoothing out those edges so that it starts to become a smooth curve and not jagged edges. Also, sexy slow-mo. And this is where we are ending part two of the kitchen renovation. Look at this. Girl, stop it. You stop it right now. This is where we left off. And this is where we are. I'm really just standing here looking at all of the things that are different from when this property was bought and it's just crazy. The amount of skills that I have developed in the last half year, I guess. I was so intimidated to do this kitchen, but now it's done. Well, it's not. We have paint, grout, finishing work, sealing the tile, staining that beam. You know what? We're just gonna, we're just gonna be happy we're here. But more importantly, this. <laughs> Come on! See you next time for part three of the kitchen makeover and that's the finale. We will be done to be done. What a concept. I'm gonna keep staring. You have a great day with the rest of your day and I will see you back here when I do.